Hi there, today we're going to paint an autumn tree. We're going to be using T-Rex inks and most of the colors that I've chosen for this project uh, come from their warm earth tones collection. Uh, so real quick I'll go through those. Um, but first, my name's Lori Williams, so if we haven't had a chance to meet before, it's nice to meet you. I hope you enjoy this presentation um, as well as others that I have here on my YouTube channel. So the first color T-Rex inks that I have is Autumn Yellow. And then I'm going to be using the Snapdragon Pink. I pulled out the Cabaret. I'm sorry, Cabernet. There's Butterfly Orange. There's Cafe Crema. Meteorite. Canyon Rust. And then I pulled from the Cool Earth Tones collection, I pulled out Olive Grove. So I'm going to use these colors today. I may not end up using them all, um, but I do have them out ready to go in case I need them. So when I get started with any project, this is kind of my typical setup here. I have a piece of non-porous paper. So um, there are a number of non-porous brands out there. You can use Yupo, you can use Graphics, Makes the Durabrite. Terra Slate has a paper that works really well, and Nara. Um, some of those papers have advantages over others in that if you have, you're have you creating something that you need to create white back to white, um, your best bets there are Nara and Graphics Durabrite. But there is one other alternative, and it's the one I'm working on today. And this is just Amazon Bakes Basics Photo Paper. And you don't work on the front side, you work on the back side of the photo paper. Um, so a lot of people, when they get the photo paper, they're like, oh, it's not working, the inks aren't moving. Well, that is because you want to work the back side of the photo paper because it's the side that has a coating on it that is very similar to the other non-porous papers that I mentioned previously. Um, so I usually have a little container here that I can keep some isopropyl alcohol in. 91% is what I use. You could also use a blending solution. T-Rex also makes a blending solution. And um, I also have some 91% isopropyl alcohol in a tiny little um, container as well in case I need that. Then I have a few brushes. My favorite brush to use in a lot of my paintings are Filbert brushes. And this is just a brand that I found on Amazon. I do have um, some Simply Simons that I absolutely love, um, but I just pulled these out because they were convenient and, and handy. I usually use a weld palette. This is so that I can put some ink down and let it evaporate out so that I get a more paint-like consistency to the ink. And then for splattering, I have a, a, a toothbrush. We're gonna use that. And also, I, this is something that I use in almost every single painting I do with alcohol ink, and that is a Sharpie. And my favorite Sharpie to use is a black dual tip. It's a fine, it's a fine and an ultra fine tip. Um, so those are good. I use those for detail work a lot. So I may or may not use all these supplies, but I just wanna go through them just so you can see kind of what my setup is. I always work on paper towel. Um, I actually have multiple surfaces under here, but I always work on paper towel because I end up dripping a lot of the inks. I've also attached my paper to a piece of cardboard. This isn't usually necessary. Um, I do it, especially if I'm gonna do rocking um, to let the inks flow. Um, or if I'm using the Amazon Basics paper, because if I'm using that Amazon Basics photo paper, it tends to curl on me, and that's no good. So the first thing I want to do, let's jump, in, let's jump into this presentation. The first thing that I want to do is start putting some color down. And for this painting, I'm not going to actually cover the whole piece. I'm just going to splash down some colors. We're going to add some detail to the tree and then add a ground. Um, and then that way you can see just how easy it is to create with these inks. And I'm going to start out with this autumn yellow and I'm going to put a couple of drops, three or four drops actually, into my weld palette. Now I could dilute that with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol so that it's not as thick. So I'm going to do that, just a few drops of that, and then I'm going to just kind of swirl this around the brush. That way um, the, this color is not 
um, as saturated. I, I'm going to build up my color. So my ground first uh, ink that I put down, I want it to be very fluid and very uh, translucent. Now, one of the things that's actually really good about the T-Rex inks is they're very saturated in color, uh, which comes in handy in a lot of situations. Um, but starting off, I want to have something lower saturation. So I'm just actually going to just kind of tap around here. And what I'm going to do is a tree. So I'm just kind of tapping in some color very simply. Okay, and that's, believe it or not, that's all I'm going to do there for that. Now I'm going to come in with the next color, which is going to be um, a butterfly orange and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to drip a couple of drops here and then I'm going to have a, a few drops of the alcohol. I'm going to set that over to the side. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is kind of splash down a few colors of this and all I am literally all I'm doing here is tapping. And in some places those colors are going to blend together So I clean off my brush in the in the alcohol container here and then I just give it a wipe on my paper towel and that's the way I clean my brushes um, before moving to the next color. So the next color I think I want to use here is I'm going to go with um, the Snapdragon Pink. Now these are kind of brighter colors to start with but we're going to end up dulling this down a bit and, and so I wanted to go ahead and start off with these bright colors and then build on that. So again, I'm gonna add, dilute this out just a tad. Just sort of tap that in. So what starts to happen when I tap it in, is you start to see it blooms and mixes with others. And I think that's, um, I'm almost ready with my tree there. So, but what I need to do is come in with some more uh, warmer colors. I'm actually going to, actually I say warmer, but this is actually um, a cool earth tone color, um, which is the olive green. I'm gonna drop that in the palette here. And on this one, I'm gonna leave it a more saturated, and while it's still very inky, come in and tap. And then one more color for this part of it, and then we're going to come in and um, start working on the little trunk for the tree. And I'm going to I'm going to use a little bit. I was going to say meteorite, but I'm going to use canyon rust. So get these fall colors in there. I want to drown out some of that Snapdragon pink in there because I don't really need that much pink in there. I'm trying to go for the autumn colors here. So I'm cleaning off my brush. I'm going to let this, let this be just for a few minutes while I come in and start drawing in some of the other area. The next um, one I'm going to end up is, is putting down some little ground area here. And I'll, I'll start a little bit with that me, uh, another color called Meteorite. But before I do that, I want to I want to come in with one of my darker browns. I think this cafe is probably going to be the right choice here. I'm going to put this in my weld palette. I have one well left, and so I'm just going to use that to start to paint in my tree trunk. <clears throat> now I usually freestyle this my tree trunks, and this takes a little bit of practice. So after you've done a few, then you can then you will. Um, sort of get the hang of it but I'm just going to come in and kind of put in a trunk here. I'm not going to go all the way up because I want to make some of these branches and stuff come out but this is just kind of laying in the base for it. And then kind of want the ground. Just kind of roughen that in a little bit as well. Let's come in with this autumn color rust color, canyon rust in here a little bit. 
Okay. So now the color that I want to use is called Space Black. And it is another T-Rex color. This is their black. And I don't have an empty well, so I'm just going to actually just put a drop right up here on the top, which is perfect because um, I want some of the alcohol in the ink to evaporate so that I can actually paint with a finer tip brush. And so I did introduce this finer tip brush in the beginning, but I'm going to now. This is a, this is a number three round that I have here. Fine tip. And I'm going to move my filbert aside and just kind of start get a feel for what we got going on here. Okay. So for my tree, this is where I'm going to start building in my branches. And I want them to be able to go off in different directions. So I'm just going to start painting this in here. And it can go up into the tree. resemble a tree and so you can see that you know the alcohol has started to evaporate out of this ink so I can start to paint with them a little bit so I'm just gonna put some in here but I want to I'm gonna keep some highlights from that light brown in there <clears throat> and I only usually take this so far and then I come in with my sharpie and then and start going a little bit more detailed with it because what happens with the tree when you're painting with it it's very very thick at the bottom and then it gets really thin in the tree and this um, starts looking a lot better when you get more real you get more finer detail with it so I'm taking my sharpie which is um, the fine tip the ultra fine tip here and I'm going to just start bringing that into the tree. Now obviously with a tree, the limbs aren't all in front of the leaves, so we are going to actually come on top of this and add some more detail, add some more ink on top um, to, to push some of these branches back into the tree. But right now we're just kind of like laying a little bit of framework for the tree. We're starting to get there now this is the fun part um, we're gonna get kind of inky with everything a little bit but um, before I do that I have this um, alcohol here and it's stained now with the black that I clean my brush on so what I'm gonna do I bring it up and tap the brush I'm just gonna tap in here a little bit to give it a little bit of a base Take a little bit of this um, olive and put it down here too a little bit. And make it really kind of inky and let it kind of do its thing here a little bit. But I just want to bring some of that in. Okay. We'll come back and add more of that later. 
So now I'm going to switch back over to my Filbert brush and we're going to tap in some more of this color on top. So let's come in here with some yellow. And just tapping it in over these branches. So that's going to push some of this back. Let's try a little bit of orange. Okay, I'm ready for a little bit of splatter. So for splatter, I use my um, a little toothbrush and I load it up with a little bit of ink and I just come in here and start splattering around, like, just like that. And I'm gonna come in here with a little bit of this rust. Do the same thing. Maybe a little bit of the cream. Kind of switching back to my brush and kind of tap in here a little bit. And I'm going to keep on with this until I'm happy with the way it looks. So I'm a little bit better with that. <clears throat> I want to work on my trunk of my tree a little bit because what I like to do is pretend the light is coming from some source, like maybe straight on. And what I do is I actually lift out some of that ink and to do that I put I have my brush damp not you don't want a lot of alcohol on it but you want it damp with alcohol and then you just come in and you pick areas that you want to have highlighted and you just lift that out like that I lift out and these trees sometimes do interesting little twists and turns so I'm just gonna kinda like add some highlight curving these these uh, limbs as if they're going into the roots. There we go. So you start to see that little bit of interest starting to form there. More than just a brown area. Let's come in right here. A little bit more. And you can blend that out or whatever. So you can see that that starts to look a whole lot more realistic. And then I want to um, kind of add some of a golden color in there to just to show that that tree trunk is brown and not white or gray. I mean, it has some of that in there, but only some. Okay, that's fun. Come with a, some fun colors. This time I'm going to I'm going to pull out my Cabernet, and again I don't have I do not have a an extra well for this. So I'm going to use this side here again. I am not going to dilute this. I'm going to load up my brush a little bit, and I'm just going to come in here and just some taps in. some of that Cabernet up into the tree since we didn't use that before. And remember earlier I said I was going to try a little meteorite in here. I ended up using every single one of these colors, which is fine. I'm going to take this meteorite here on the palette. I'm just going to load some of that down in here. The more I tap, the more it's going to bloom and add texture. So you do this till you're satisfied with that. And then I'm going to come in here with my Sharpie. And I'm going to start adding in some, some like little grassy area.
And I'm doing this by just kind of tapping and then dragging upward. Pull some of that into the tree as well. A lot of times trees have little grassy areas around the bottom. The ones in the front are usually bigger and they get smaller when they go back. That's your perspective. And then in this tree, I can kind of push back some of these areas by painting in some of the areas with the black Sharpie. And I just kind of do that sporadically and I'll just blend that in in a minute. That really, sometimes you have to clean the Sharpie off on your paper towel when you're working with it if you find that you um, run into some issues. But what I'm doing here is just adding in some um, dark areas so that there's an underneath some of these. It gives it a little bit more realistic look. So I'm just using a damp brush here to get to give this a little bit of like contrast in the in the uh, branches so that it stands out. Now I'm just splattering a little bit of alcohol to create some like inky blooming effect here. So I think we're close on this project. I usually like to bring over a black mat to just kind of frame it and see what it would look like framed, see whatever what other pieces I need to do. So I'm just going to place this here and take a quick look. And what's standing out to me are these big blobs in the center. So I'm going to actually come in and, and add uh, some Cabernet in there uh, to fill in those spots. Be picking up my Filbert brush again and I'm just going to just kind of tap in those areas where it ended up uh, washing out. And I think I'm really liking this. I'm going to go call it done. Um, if you're watching this, if you want to uh, learn some more fall painting, creating with alcohol ink and mixed media, um, check out the Festival of Art. Our Fall Festival of Art 2023 kicks off September 8th, runs through September 30th. Um, it's myself and 12 other artists that will be sharing workshops and there will be a four workshops dropping every week plus we have two live paint along sessions that you can participate in so if you're interested in that i'll put a link down in the comments before i do want to let you know lots of really cool fun fall projects mostly relating to alcohol ink but there are a few that are just mixed media and other mediums so there's something for everyone something for all levels give definitely try it out and if you like um, what you see and what I create uh, give me a follow and a like and um, I, that way you'll get notified when I post new content thanks for watching and we will see you soon